Yo, 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 what's cracking everybody? It's Wednesday evening. We did a damn near good time and started it right at 8.30. We got the power hour where, you know, we're always letting the good times roll. I got one rolled right here, right now. Actually smoking on some cabbage patch. Smoking on some cabbage patch. And since, since we're sharing what we're smoking, might as well give a shout out to everybody out there helping us create these videos. And this week, man, got to give a shout out to a natural cannabis company, Oakland Organics. Man, they are just woo, blessing us with, with flavors and flavors and flavors. And then, oh, some more flavors. Uh, tons of flavors to get smoking on from Time Wreck to J27, uh, Sunset Sherbert. We got Banana Split, uh, Purple Crippler, and a lot more. So we're going to get into all that. Shout out to them because I definitely appreciate having um, lots of flavors to smoke on. It's always a lovely thing for that. As well as give a shout out to uh, Culture Magazine, because you know we've been rocking with these guys for a minute now, getting a bunch of stuff started. You're gonna see a FN interview with Master Bong, yours truly, in there very soon. So make sure that you stay tuned for that, because that's coming out. So shout out to those guys. As well as, I wanna share something very special with you guys. We just freaking rolled this up the other day. It was a half ounce joint. It was amazing. I had a great time. We'll share a little bit more about it in a second. But a uh, shout out to Cartel Papers. Whoop, whoop. And if, if you see, yeah, you did see it correctly. You did see it correctly because it is a $100 bill, my friends. It's a $100 bill that you roll up. And I want to let you know that it is all safe to smoke. I know you see the ink on there. And it is non-toxic and safe. So I want to make sure I let you guys know that because... Uh, we did roll up a half ounce the other day in there and smoked it, and it was delicious, let me tell you. So shout out to those guys, um, because couldn't do it without them. As well as the man behind the scenes, always doing it all, uh, making sure the show happens, because um, I'm getting really effing blazed on here. So shout out to Gypsy and, uh, and ZenLive.TV for everything that they're doing to make sure that the show is here for you guys each and every single Wednesday. So how are you doing, my friend? How, how is it in the NYC this lovely evening? It's it's doing great. It's a little bit rainy, a little overcast here on on uh, on the East Coast here at 11:45 on the East Coast. But uh, we're we're doing well over here. We're moving, we're grooving, we're getting ready for a few events here in April. It's going to be a busy month here at the network uh, and and for myself uh, as a program director of the network and and also as as a, as a master bong producer. Man, it, it just doesn't stop. So I'm having a good time. Lots of coffee, lots of caffeine, and uh, lots of medication. Oh my God! Yeah, you you know. You know, especially the last one, Ed. I mean, talking about the show and everything, we have, dude, we have the most amazing, awesome show lined up. I'm super excited for the show tonight for a few reasons. Um, you know, we're switching it up and getting some activism in here. And uh, we're going to be sharing Michaela's story. Uh, a young child, actually. She has leukemia. And her father has created Parents for Pot. His name is Brandon, and uh, he's going to be sharing a lot of stuff that's going on uh, with them and their life and everything that's happening, giving some background stories. So really getting into some activism stuff. But before that, um, you know, everybody loves glass. I love glass. And we got a freaking world renowned glass blower with us this evening that we're going to be chatting with and sharing some of his stuff because he has he's been blowing glass long, long, long before it was cool to blow glass and everybody was blowing glass back in the day, back in the day. And so, you know, I I'm looking forward to having him on the show. I'm not even going to tell you who it is. You guys got to wait. I'm an open hooky. You got to wait another five to 10 minutes because we're going to switch things up and do it a little bit differently. Right, Gypsy? We're doing things a little bit differently on this show. Oh, yeah. You, you, you got to change it up for folks. And, and, you know, people have short attention spans, bro. So mm -hmm. you got to so make it fun and entertaining for them. Always. Always, 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 always. So what we're going to do, switching it up a little bit differently, is we're going to do the wins of the week right now because one of the things that I want to do is I want to start sharing some motivational, inspirational music with you guys called Success Beats. Uh, I have some friends who have been doing this for a minute. It's music that I listen to on the regular. Uh, I love it. They take beats that are already out there with songs that we all know and love and switch up the verbiage and take out the audio and replace it with audio that is way more beneficial for your life and positively impacting your life. So we're gonna listen to that. We're gonna share the wins first. And so my win of the week, before we get into Gypsy's win of the week, is I'm gonna bring it back to Cartel Papers again. Um, I hadn't done this ever, I don't think, but we did roll up a half ounce joint the other night 
and got smoking on that. So I was able to roll that up, that beat, that challenge. I was ready for it. I felt that I have grown my smoking career to roll a half ounce in, in a paper. And you know, that's what we did. We put it together. And so that was a big, big, big win for me because I hadn't rolled a half ounce before. I knew I could do it. Um, I just hadn't done it. So I'm super proud of myself, giving me two thumbs up and a pat on the shoulder. And we got to smoke it with all the homies. So that was even better, right, Gypsy? I mean, when you call people up and tell them, hey, we're about to smoke a half ounce joint, everybody's pretty happy. Yeah, you, can, you can't do that by yourself. That is literally single-handedly the most selfish thing a stoner could ever do. Well, it's not even selfish. You would completely fuck, like, no <laughs> way you would be able to make it. Your throat would be dead. So you wouldn't even want to try to smoke it by yourself. And who likes to smoke weed by themselves? I love smoking with people. So yeah. it's always funner to smoke a group of people. So that is my win of the week. And I don't know if you popped up a couple pictures of it. I we did. even put it on the scale just to make sure, because I know there's the skeptics out there, you know, so we had to put it on the scale, Gypsy, and show them that it was really over 14 grams. I see and that. It's 15.3 uh, I'm, I'm showing here on the picture. Yeah, the crutch, the crutch weighed like 0. 0.6, 0. 0.7, and then the paper was only like 0. 0.2. So we made sure that we had it over a half ounce so that everybody could see. So we got that on there, and uh, that was definitely my win of the week. What is your win of the week, my friend? My win of the week is I had a good friend of mine uh, by the name of AJ. She came up out of town from uh, from New Orleans, and she brought her eight-year-old son, MB, all the way up from New Orleans. He's actually wow. originally from, uh, from Portland, Oregon. And his, guess what his favorite city in all the world is that he's never been to? The NYC! The NY mother F and C. And I had an opportunity. I, I'd have to say I am one of those New Yorkers that are kind of like over New York and just kind of... You know, if I see a tourist, get out of my way. And it really gave me an opportunity to kind of see the city in in, in almost a, a fresh pair of eyes. I was going to say a new light. A new light, uh, almost as if I was in, if I was eight years old. And I got to show him around the city, and it was actually really cool. And and it, it you know, it hits you on the inside in a special spot where he's just like, man, you know, kids really do see they see things from a different perspective, and 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 you do pick things up for them, and and you know, as you get older, you take things for granted. So it was nice to kind of like bring it back a few notches. So that was my win. I actually, it was it was it's a bit of a spiritual moment there. I'm not even gonna front. Nice, dude. Very nice. Being, I'm, I'm sure that he's gonna remember that for the rest of his life. First time oh, he went is. to the we NYC, his favorite freaking city, took him and uh, you got to share that with him and help create that most amazing uh, trip. So, dude, congratulations on that. Good shit. Absolutely, yeah. Got to, got got him to see the Statue of Liberty, Empire State Building. And if you could have saw this kid's face when he looked up and saw this the uh, the Empire State Building, he was like, "Wow, it's a big building, man." <laughs> <laughs> for sure it is. Yeah. So that was my win of the week. Nice, dude. Congratulations to you. Thumbs up, two thumbs. I don't. My other thumb is holding the blunt. Otherwise, I give you two thumbs up right no now. No doubt. <laughs> a thumb and a but, blunt. But um, do you have that uh, success be queued up, ready to go, ready to slap, so that we can all listen to and uh, positively impact all of our lives right now? Absolutely. Shift our vibration to a higher level. Absolutely. Ready to go? I'm. I'm always ready. <laughs> all right. So as we go through we go. this, let's think. So this let that Bob little Bob. yellow dot on the screen represent your level of awareness this represents your level of awareness this is what you're aware of now everything you've got in your life everything your relationships your money everything is an expression of your own level of awareness see people that earn fifty thousand a year are not earning 50 because they want 50. people are earning 50 because they're not aware of how to earn 150. people that are suffering from headaches they're not suffering from headaches because they want to suffer from headaches. They're suffering from headaches because they're not aware of how to eliminate the headache. It's their head. They made it ache. They can make it stop. So as you see, it's awareness we're after. Now think of this. If that little dot represents our awareness and it's responsible for everything we've got in life, just think of how your life could change if we magnify it just a little bit. I mean, everything would start to change. Our relationships would change. We would be healthier. We would live in healthier bodies. We would know more people. We'd earn more money. We'd be able to do more interesting things. And if we just increased it a little bit more, everything starts to shift. Well, I've been living this way now for 40 years. It absolutely fascinated me. I celebrated my 70th birthday last week. I got more energy than most people, 20. I have absolutely no intentions of slowing down. People should say, you should slow down. That's a bunch of crap. We should speed up. We've got more power. We've got more power. The most erudite scientist alive 
can't even guess at what you and I are capable of doing. No one knows what we're capable of. All the power is omnipresent. That's within you, within me. Slow down, we're just starting to warm up. Slow down, we're just starting to warm up. What we Slow want to do down. is calm down. Starting to warm what up. We want to do is calm down. <laughs> that's uh, that's the man Bob Proctor. Um, been studying his teachings for a minute. Uh, point out a couple of things on there. Uh, talk about raising awareness. Talking about your radar screen and paying attention to what's your radar screen. Give you the download that I get with that. And uh, the cognition is that, you know, we got the screen in front of us and what you can see and everybody's focused on what you see on the screen. And that's what you look at in your life. And that is the physical representation of exactly what you created in your life. But what you have to understand is that this is just the one foot by one foot screen or a one inch by one inch screen. And you got the freaking whole world out there still where things are happening that you don't know that's happening. But all those things happening out there affect what you see right inside right here. So raise your level of awareness. And uh, know that uh, you have all the power with inside you to uh, create whatever you want to create. Bam! That's the download with that one. And uh, you have any downloads with that, Gypsy, or anything to add to that, or uh, or any words with that before we we shift gears and get rocking and a rolling, dude, on a whole nother level? Well, it's it's always good to hear when 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 you hear folks that that you know typically you think oh one you know we're getting older oh we should slow down. That guy's energy was like higher than most people that that I know and work with. So And that let me tell you that video is like from a while ago and he still has the same energy level. That video is from like maybe like 6 or 7 years ago. Like he's 78, maybe 79 Bob Proctor. I'm sure we could google it. You could google it and figure out exactly how old he is right now, but he's pretty old and he has is fucking pumped, dude. He inspires me to keep my energy level high when I'm like when people ask me how my energy level is high, like, man, I just got to think about Bob Proctor. Like, that guy keeps his energy level high, and he's, like, three times as old as me. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Shit like that, I don't know, but you know what I mean? He keeps it up, so I know we can keep the energy level high, and, um, yeah, we're just getting started, man. We're not slowing down. We, we're going to move at warp speed, just very calm and precise in our uh, in our actions that we're taking. For sure, yeah, man. So that that's some good stuff. I, I like that segment, man. I like that a lot. Yeah, we're gonna be doing this more often because and then I'll tell everybody we'll we'll definitely um if you just YouTube success beats, they got tons of new tracks always coming out. They're really gearing up and just doing a lot more. And like I said, these are some of the tools in my toolkit that I use to inspire me, keep me focused, keep me positive, keep me uh, on the right track, keep my mentality right, and uh, keep me positively. Uh, creating and impacting my environment uh, on all levels and levels that we don't even know. So it's a very great tool to use. If you like it, it resonates with you, go check it out. There'll be a lot more. We're going to be playing more on the show. I love the tracks. It's what I love to listen to. So I'm going to share it with you guys. <laughs> but without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the event that we've all been waiting for uh, we do have a very special artist with us this evening. This guy has been blowing glass since freaking 1975, my friends. He is now internationally known and recognized artist, author, and teacher. He has his work in tons of museums, uh, you know, in the U.S. and around the world. And this guy has just been nonstop uh, creating and teaching and sharing his information. And that's why we wanted to get him on the show tonight he has some amazing designs we're going to go over he actually just won in 2014 uh champs uh trade show has a glass blowing competition he won that along with plenty of other competitions been in tons of magazines uh hq magazine uh crafts report magazine and uh lots more he's done collabs with everybody from snick to darby and ham and again lots more people in between he's going to be sharing all that and uh, one of the things that I actually really love and appreciate, you guys might uh, remember the game Mousetrap uh, when you were a kid playing that. I know that we played that. That is a Rube Goldberg contraption. Let's get the let's get the accurate name for that. And so he created a ginormous or helped quarterback a create a ginormous one of these uh, in a trade show in Atlantic City a little while ago. So this guy is amazing. He's doing outer worldly intergalactic. Uh, you know, putting together glass here on a whole nother level. So, without further ado, Bondu Dunham, how are you doing this evening, my friend? And uh, what is going on with you in your life, dude? Hey, man, how's it going? I'm doing great. I'm having a good time here, getting ready for a trip to Denver next week. Oh, yeah. 
We'll see you out there, dude. We're gonna be we we're gonna be touching down on the 13th. We take off on Monday. So uh, you know, maybe we need to get on a session out there. I'm gonna definitely jot that down in my notes right here of things to do. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot happening in Denver next week. So I'm gonna be participating in a couple of shows up there and hanging out with some buds and checking out the whole scene. Yes, dude, there's gonna be lots of stuff going on. I've actually been in Colorado the past uh three years so this will be year number four or year number three i forget for uh, being out there on 420 it's always a fun packed exciting adventure out there around this time from you know all the events going on to festivals and uh you know everything else in between there's so many people coming in there so many people coming in there but um dude why don't you share a little bit about your story who you are your backing because you've been doing this for a very long time and uh, let people get to know you a little bit more, and then we'll kind of, you know, dive into what's going on uh, nowadays. Sure thing. Yeah, I started blowing glass back in 1975, which, as you said, was before it was really cool. Uh, <laughs> I was, uh, you know, I was in high school. I was kind of a nerdy kid. I had a, a pretty extensive chemistry lab in my parents' basement, <laughs> and I was into, I was into playing around with chemicals and, you know, making explosives or whatever I could come up with formulas for, and uh, I thought that really what I wanted to do was um, be a mad scientist. So I figured the chemistry equipment that I could get at the hobby store, which, of course, nowadays you can't get Jack anymore, but it, back then you could get some chemical equipment, and but even so, none of it was really cool enough for what I wanted. I really wanted to have like a Dr. Frankenstein thing going on. <laughs> so I figured if I learned to blow some glass, I could make more elaborate chemical apparatus and be a proper mad scientist. Uh, so I got some books out of the library and started teaching myself, and at some point the the glass became more compelling to me than the chemistry was. And I dropped out of a chemical engineering school to be an artist full-time. Wow. And that's mostly what I've been doing since then. Um, so I do, uh, I do a lot of different things out of glass. Um, you know, when I was in high school first starting out, I made some pipes for me and my friends, but they were really quite primitive you know uh, i mean that was before you do you have left. any of those left nowadays does anybody have one anywhere from i think those? uh I, I got an email from one of my friends from high school who said he still had one sitting around somewhere this was a oh, couple wow. years ago so hopefully he still does but they were you know they were pretty basic you know this was before even bob snodgrass was known about you know very widely and uh so i had some real simple things and um and then since then, I've built up a business doing all kinds of glass stuff. You know, starting off with little glass animals, and and then more sculptural things and goblets. And um, I, what I do now, in addition to making heady pieces, is I, I'm known for kinetic glass sculptures, so pieces that move. So, like you said, Rube Goldberg machines out of glass, um, marble tracks with motorized elevators, and working model steam engines out of glass. Wow, out of glass. So it will, yeah. it will, well, you could actually like put it in the water and it's going to go. Yeah, it, it, it uh, runs on steam and it'll, you know, they don't have a lot of torque to do anything useful. This is kind of a stationary engine like you would see in a, an old factory or something. Huh. But uh, they're pretty cool. They're fanciful and whimsical. And these kind of things make me feel like I've finally achieved my uh, childhood aim of being a mad scientist. Yes. So I surround myself with these weird kinetic contraptions, and I create my own fantastic world. Uh, so I started, you know, I started doing pipes just a few years ago. I've been, yes. I've been kind of an honorary member of the pipe maker community for a long time because I wrote some how-to books on glass blowing that are sort of considered the standard in the field at this point. It's called contemporary lamp working, and those are. Uh, Sort of the standard in the field. A lot of the glass blowers have those in their shop. A lot of people learn from those books, uh, getting themselves started in glass because it it answers a lot of the basic questions that you need to answer to get over the threshold to start making glass. So anyway, um, you know, a lot of the the big name pipe makers n knew me from my books, and I was always hanging out with these guys and checking out what they were doing, and and uh, you know, checking out their techniques and and putting some of that stuff in my books too. So. It was one of the first ways that uh, pipe making was being more publicly acknowledged was in my books. Not the only way, obviously, but uh, really wanting to promote the pipe makers and encourage them to keep going and evolving, evolving the field, evolving their techniques and their artistry and, and the market, too. So 
Uh, I really just started uh, getting involved in making pipes for sale a, a couple of years ago. I was encouraged by some of my artist friends like Robert Mickelson and some other people to really just get into it. And uh, it's been a blast. I'm having a good time. I still do a lot of other stuff besides the pipes, but I, I jump into the pipe scene from time to time, like a couple of these trade shows that are coming up and some of the other events. Like I, I was one of the judges for the DFO last year and did a demo there also. And me and Ham taught a class there where we did a, uh, before the DFO, where we did a huge um, a collaborative kinetic pipe that was uh, part marble run Rube Goldberg machine and part... Uh, incredible water ladder lifting contraption that ham made and uh, that was a blast Making is that, that so. the craziest uh one of those kinetic constructions that you've done yeah that's that one was pretty wild that was the first bong powered piece that we had done you know that i <laughs> you know i've done some other pieces that have pipes you in guys them the guy from the ish out of that one then didn't you pardon you macgyvered the ish out of that one yeah, that one was pretty crazy because it was, uh, you know, we what we did is we wanted to have uh, a little bit of a plan, but not too much of a plan, because you want to have that that creative energy when you're actually putting the thing together. Of course. So uh, Ham and I talked about it a little bit beforehand, sketched out a a basic concept. But the thing with kinetic glass sculpture is there's always crazy stuff you got to figure out on the fly when you're making it. So it was a good time. We were doing that um, as a demo class for a few people, and uh, yeah, that was that was pretty cool. And then people got to check it out during DFO also. Is that is it still around somewhere in somebody's house, or do you have it, or what happens with them when they are done? I think Ham's got that now, and uh, it may be going in a museum. We're we're talking to some people about Ooh. maybe putting a museum somewhere. It needs to it needs to have a good home where it's. Uh, properly preserved definitely I, w I would say for sure and then put in a nice big glass case and then you know every like day at noon it goes off or something right, right? <laughs> yeah. everybody gathers around for the show gets together and it's good to go at whatever time 420 i think is when it should really go off but absolutely yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean there's a, there's some museums when we were over in uh like what the hash museum and some other crazy museums in amsterdam and stuff over in europe i, I what like Seems like that would be so perfect for it over there. That would be a cool place too, yeah. <laughs> Lots of places. Uh, another thing that I that I thought of real quick when you were talking about the books and how you know you kind of wrote those and that's how in a way you've always been connected to this industry. I, I'm assuming, aside from you know smoking and whatnot as well. Um, but how many people do you think have actually you know you've had an impact in teaching? You know, two days. Oh days. well, it's through been the a long time. Through the books, the thousands, you know, because we've sold that many. So, um, yeah, I don't know, 10,000 people probably have been learning from the books. And, and plus I've taught classes and stuff and done demos. And I'm doing a demo at the Glass Art Society coming up here in San Jose in uh, June. That's one of the major international conference that happens every year. Ooh, so, San Jose um, in June, huh? I I'm in the Bay Area, so. Oh well, you have to check it out. It's uh, if you go to uh, glassart.org, glassart one word dot org, um, you find out about the Glass Art Society, and they'll have some info on the conference there. And um, that's a pretty cool scene. That's got all kinds of glass. It's not, you know, it's not pipes specifically. It's not heady stuff. In fact, um, you won't see much heady stuff there. However. There are demos by different artists, and both Buck and Bob Snodgrass and myself are doing demos there. Nice. And, uh, you know, we won't be doing heady pieces, probably yeah. be doing something else, but, um, you know, we've all got different techniques to show that are really cool. It doesn't matter whether it's a pipe or not. It's, it's glass art, and we love it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You get to uh, create your masterpieces, whatever they are, from an animal, like you were saying, to a heady piece. Uh, anything in between, you're getting to uh, do what you love every day, and that's really what matters. Absolutely. And, you know, what it does is it raises the awareness of people who aren't necessarily, you know, involved in the in the pipe industry or even the 420 world. You know, they get to see that there's some serious glass art happening in this world. And yes. it really opens people's eyes, and they start to check things out, and they go, and, you know, maybe even people who weren't taking pipes seriously before, they, they have to open their eyes and see, whoa, this is, this is really amazing. 
yeah. some of the, the top creativity that's happening in glass art is really going on in the pipe world right now. Um, you know, not you know, not the only creativity, obviously, but some amazing stuff um, that all glass artists really need to check out and, and know more about is going down with the pipes. I mean, it's like what it is, I feel, especially with oil rigs now and that whole um, wave of popularity is like, it's just, it's a bunch of people at the same time pursuing something at a level and everybody kind of pushing each other in a way that you see something that's possible and then you aim to do it and you learn something different because it didn't work quite the same and then now you have a new technique that then someone else can learn and do and add to with another technique and it's like it's just very synergistic right now with glass and uh, how it's developing and I mean it seems like things of one of the questions I had for you was like the what are the biggest the biggest change or biggest changes that you've seen in glass in the last you know five to ten years I mean for me I, I feel it's just like it's such a shift in something looking like a bong to something looking like a piece of art that you can smoke out of too I mean buck Absolutely. and those fish and everything it's like that's fucking crazy and who did the chandelier? What what was that the most? Ex didn't he do some chandelier that sold for some crazy amount? Or who was? He's was that been him? involved in yeah. He's been involved in some chandeliers, and uh, I think Scott Deppie and some other guys have been involved in some pretty big chandeliers too. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's going crazy. I mean, for me, what I've seen going on the last five or ten years with with the pipes evolving. It's just amazing, you know. It's like it, I really feel privileged just to be hanging out with these people and seeing what's going on. Um, and you know, the it, it's not just the the pipe makers themselves, but you know, there's this whole support industry for them now. And you know, there's obviously the the head shops and you know head shops slash galleries that look more like really more like an art gallery than anything else that are supporting these guys, which is awesome. But also the suppliers. I mean, there are colors of glass now mm -hmm. available mm -hmm. that back when I started, you know, 1975, I'm going to sound like an old baby boomer, but back when I started, you could not get colored glass. You know, maybe you could find some cobalt blue or some uranium tube, and that was about it. You were, wow. you had, I, I, I like to tell people back then we had to, uh, mix our own color from dead bugs and used q-tips <laughs> it was it was slim pickings out there and then you started getting some of these color companies starting up you know like in the mid 90s and it has just since then it's just been exploding um and the color really opens up a lot of possibilities i mean i i do a lot of work that's just clear and there are some amazing pipes being done with just clear glass too um but the color just creates a whole other level of opportunity for people to appreciate it mm. and for people to create, you know, different different palettes and different styles of work. So yeah. I really want to give a shout out to all the people that support the pipe makers, both in terms of, you know, supplies and tools that are available now and all that stuff, and also the the buyers, the wholesale buyers who who put together the shops and the galleries that bring this stuff to the the public where it can really be appreciated more broadly definitely definitely i mean that, you know, that's... and not to mention not to mention uh radio shows like this and the magazines and everything else that's going down yeah i would say that's the other shift i mean being able to have really nice um basically museums i would call them you know glass shops that showcase this amazing art and allow people to come through and look at it and see it uh, you know, there's lots of heady glass places now all over, and it's really amazing that it's it's heading the way it is, you know, where we have these places now where it's literally just dedicated, it's a museum for heady pieces, basically is how I look at it, you know, and that there's places where people can go and just see this and get exposed to it, whereas, you know, 10 years ago, I mean, 15 years ago, right, there's, you know, 2003 was Pipe Dreams, Operation Pipe Dreams, and swooping yeah. everybody through, so that wasn't that long ago. You know. <laughs> yep, and everything's recovered pretty well since then. So screw oh those my guys. God, yes. <laughs> and flourished and flourished really, you know. Yeah. Amazing things, amazing things happening. So, man, is there a I know there was one more thing you you have some crazy 
Z Zorplex module philosophy. Yeah, I call Can my pipes. I call my pipes Zorplex modules. Zorplex. Just because, just because I adopted sort of a weird, um, you know, in terms of presenting the pieces, I'm in this sort of intergalactic, transdimensional, shamanistic mood when I'm into making pipes, nice. and I just want to carry that through in sort of the presentation. So I call them Zorplex modules. That's X O R P L E X mm -hmm. modules. And if you go to my website, my pipe site, which is zorplex.com, that's X-O-R-P-L-E-X.com, and you can check out some of them. Um, you know, my, my attitude about pipes is that I want you to be in an altered state of consciousness before you even light the thing up. You know, to me, it's about journeying into other dimensions of possibilities of consciousness, you know, mm. um, and, and seeing what is behind the veil of how we ordinarily perceive things. So to me, that's a, an intergalactic, transdimensional, shamanistic activity. And uh, that's what that's I want to do. That's activity right there, my friend. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's about exploring other forms of consciousness. So to me, the artwork itself should start to put you there. And uh, that's kind of why I take this, this tack in promoting the work and presenting it. And you'll, you'll see, I know it's, it's not all to be taken too seriously. It's, it's about having a good time too. So uh, I hope your listeners will check out my website and I'm on Instagram. Um, you know, uh, uh, I'm on Instagram at Bondu Dunham and on Twitter, although I don't do a lot on Twitter, it's at Zorplex. I'm getting into Twitter slowly. It's like all this technology. I'm an old guy. How do you keep so up with So much kids? stuff. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, we do we do a lot of uh, a lot of uh, content creation. It's key. It's very important. It's awesome that you're on the social network so people can go and discover you, learn more about you. I'm sure that Gypsy is, you know, flashing up all of your, you know, Twitter handle, Instagram, everything, uh, all the above website. And I know right. people go check out your work because it's freaking amazing. I uh, definitely I, I love your description, and for sure I uh, resonate with exactly what you were saying. It, it, your work is just amazing. Puts you in that mood. I like that that uh, you know that framework is putting you in a state before you get into the state. So uh, you're you're war you're warming up the seat, I guess you could say, right? Yeah, that's a good and way it's to put it, nicer man. Nice to hop in a warm seat than a cold one. So <laughs> your your work definitely puts you in the mood and uh, that vibration, that higher vibration. All right, love it. Beautiful. Um, well, if there is there anything else that you want to leave everybody with, and at the same time, Gypsy, if you have any last questions, because I know you you always have the questions as well, because we put these shows together together. So, um, if you have anything you want to throw in there as well, dude, by all means. Yeah, I got another another site people might want to check out, which is Bondu.info. That's my more general glass site, and that's got the info on my books and stuff. So, if people want to check that out, that's another good place to go. Perfect. Yeah, Bondu, I had a question. I wanted to know more about, uh, you know, when you were a kid and you, and, and you were, uh, you know, you had your, your lab set. What, what was, like, one of the craziest ex experiments? Did you, did you ever accidentally, like, you know, uh, uh, you know, blow up your, your, your parents' garage or anything like that? <laughs> Mag <laughs> MacGyvering no, I didn't, anything? I didn't blow up the house, but, you know, the thing I was into was, uh, uh, you know, besides occasionally making some explosive things, nitrogen triiodide is pretty cool. Um, it's relatively harmless, but it makes cool puffs of purple smoke. Cool. It's an unstable <laughs> form of iodine. But, um, you know, I was into making, uh, doing semi-micro qualitative analysis, which sounds pretty techy, but yeah. one of the things you need for that is you make a reaction with uh, hydrogen sulfide to, to uh, identify a mystery, a mystery compound, you know. Mm -hmm. And one night, my hydrogen sulfide generator, I left it, you know, it's a, it's a chemical apparatus, and uh, I left it with the stuff in there too long, and it was kind of filling the whole house with hydrogen sulfide, which is rotten egg smell. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's also actually kind of toxic. So fortunately, it wasn't at a level that was going to kill anybody, but I did stink up the whole house with hydrogen sulfide. That was fun. And, and were your were your folks uh, approving of your scientific madness, or <laughs> they were tall? My folks were very tolerant, you know. Okay. So uh, a big shout out to my parents, my late Absolutely. father and my mom, uh, for 
for letting me be the weird eccentric kid that I was that helped me become the weird eccentric adult that I am today. Absolutely. Hell yes. Thank God for all the parents <laughs> like that out there. That's how mine works too. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh. All right, MB, I'm, I'm good. You, are you ready to go on a quick commercial break? I'm ready to go on a bong break real yes. fast. I got the bong. I got some uh, Sunset Sherbert that I'm about to take a rip out of. So um, last thing I want to say is, my man, I appreciate you coming on the show and uh, donating some time to us because I know you're a very busy individual because you could always be doing something on the torture or whatnot. So I appreciate that. Look forward to uh, potentially linking up with you in Colorado. That would be awesome. And I'm definitely going to go check out glassart.org and see what's going on in San Jose in June. So uh, maybe we can link up there. But I uh, definitely appreciate your time, my man, and the story and, uh, and and what you've been doing for the industry as well, for everybody in the glass game. And, I mean, that inspires other people. So, really, you're touching even more uh, more people out there. So, thank you, my friend. Uh, absolutely. Thank you, man. Definitely. All right, everybody. We are going to be right back. We're going to take a bong break. And when we come back, we're going to be uh, joined with Brandon, uh, the creator and founder of Parents for Pot and father of Michaela. Um, and we're going to be joined with him and uh, sharing their story. So stay tuned because we're going to be right back with Power Hour where we are always letting the good times roll. This is Master Bong. I'm going to catch you guys in about 1.2 seconds. Bah. <laughs> know about vaped super dope vaporizer pens these guys have been coming out with some amazing stuff they just dropped their collab with nectar collector the micro nectar collector with introducing their switch it technology or you know if you, you love vaping and you want to get your flower on they got the vaped flora glass on glass portable vaporizer technology that they just released to everybody out there so i want you guys to check them out take a look at everything they're doing um because you know we only share the best and the finest around here continue to live life to the fullest i'm gonna catch you guys later peace You're watching the Zadalza Entertainment Network on, on ZenLive.tv. Here, you'll find ridiculously good-looking people equipped with knowledge, intellect, and passion for speaking the truth. Does it get any sexier? A filtered mind is the only crime for ZenLive. Stay tuned! Monday's got you off the wagon? Well, worry no more, because it's now officially a part of the three-day weekend. So get on board. Come party with the Standby Gypsy, Juju the Model, and Blue Rivera every Monday night for your entertainment week in review, off-the-wall interactive segments, live performances, in-depth interviews, and the latest in sports. The Hangover Takeover is live every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, only on ZenLive.tv. We're gonna get you to laugh, we're gonna get you to cry, we might get you to jerk off, we're not really sure. <laughs> Chicks with strap on, and you're engaging in sexual congress with a transsexual. I, I had no idea, tell me more. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Not a world where broken filter live could thrive. <laughs> Giddy up! <laughs> <laughs> BAM! And we're back. Man, that was a surprise jump back real quick. I wasn't even done smoking. <laughs> Gypsy, you just jumped back so fast. I was ready to take another bong hit, dude. Hey, dude, take it on air, man. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, of course. There's nothing wrong with taking another bong hit, especially out of a clean bong. So, I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But um, we are uh, we are back, ladies and gentlemen. It's the power hour. It's freaking April 8th. And uh, we're getting ready for Colorado because we're taking off to get out there early for 420. We're getting out there on 413, Gypsy. That's how early we're about to get out That's there. early, man. <laughs> that is a week early to the party. That's how much we let a party. We're going to get there a week early. The now, we just have a lot of things going on. We're going to be uh, shooting a lot of video. We're going to be meeting up with a lot of people. Uh, there's a bunch of shows going on from the big show to high times. Um, and uh, I guess more shows going on afterwards as we were just learning on the first half of the show with Mr. Bondu Dunham, amazing glass artist, been in the game since 75, man, 75, that is a long time, dude, that's a definite long time, 
And um, yeah, we're gonna be shifting gears right here, doing things a little bit differently. You know, we're talking about glass and that's amazing and that's fun and that's awesome. But we're gonna, you know, we gotta get some activism stuff on and it's an important part and aspect of this community. And there are some amazing people doing some great stuff. So we like to highlight them and give them the spotlight so that they can share their stories and uh, what's going on. Because again, I feel it's very important aspects of our community, not only smoking recreationally and medicinally, having a great time, meeting great people, but learning what's going on and how this is really uh, benefit benefiting and impacting people's lives in a whole nother way. So my friend, Brandon, executive director of Parents for Pot, how are you doing this lovely Wednesday evening, dude? I'm doing well, how are you? Doing good, doing good. We had a really nice first half of the show. Um, you know, glass is uh, another big part of this culture that has just been growing and <laughs> growing and developing and uh, changing so much. Uh, do you know who um, who Bondu Dunham is? Have you heard of him? I, I've heard of him briefly uh, before. I've actually seen quite a bit of his work on his Instagram, like he was saying. I've not had the chance to meet him, but I would love to have one of those pieces. It's beautiful. Dude, they are freaking crazy. And um, I remember seeing um, some of the spheres that he makes and everything. It's just like, I, I actually do remember, it was all coming back to me in like the middle of the interview. I was like, where exactly did we meet? And then it all rushed back to me. It was at the big show uh, last year. And I remember his whole freaking display case, dude. I'm looking forward to seeing that again. <laughs> yeah, totally. Awesome. So, dude, why don't you share a little bit about yourself, about your guys' story, and uh, kind of up to uh, up to now, and you know, parents for pot and everything that you're doing with that. Okay. Um, in 2012, our daughter Michaela, which y'all know her as, was diagnosed with T cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Um, we started the standard chemotherapy regimen and it wasn't working and so her mother and I asked for a note from her doctor saying she had this diagnosis and we went straight down to the THCF and got her her organ medical marijuana card and we began giving her full extract cannabis oil the day we got it and uh, six days later they told us she was in a stunning remission and so we decided that it was you know, in our best interest to go and tell everybody what we had done and help, you know, spread the word and, and see how many others we could help with the story that we had. And it continuously grew and went all over the world and got a lot of attention to it because nobody had really heard of giving a K cannabis except, you know, cash hide um, before us. And so it was shocking. It was cutting edge and, and it drew a lot of attention. But what it also did was it created a, a, a pull for hope for people who, who were experiencing a bad quality of life, you know, going through treatments for various diseases. Um, and, and that's kind of where we're at now with her. She's, she's still in remission. She's actually done with her standard treatments, which the state required us to continue, even though she was in remission. Uh, she's in school and she's excelling. She's she's nine years old now. She's doing fantastic, and uh, I'm so proud of her. I mean, that's amazing, dude. It's a uh, it's such a touching story because you know, kids of all people, like they never done anything wrong. You know, it's like they're just born, they're alive, and to see them go through challenges like that, uh, I mean, you know, it touches everybody's heart. And as a parent. You're, you're gonna do whatever it takes. It doesn't matter what it is. You're willing to do whatever it takes to give your child that quality of life. And I mean, it's also such a brave thing for you to do with cannabis because so many people look at cannabis at, and the stigma that's attached to it and having kids, you know, but it's 100% a-okay to go have a couple of drinks every day after work and be a parent. You know, that's no big deal. Or, you know, pop your prescription pills because your doctor gives you all these opiates to numb you out. That's no big deal to do on a daily basis. But, you know, heavens forbid that you smoke. And uh, and then even more, giving it to your child uh, to help them out. It's like all those things are just, you know, really putting your neck out there and uh, making moves and waves. And it's like, you know, like you said, you saw how much it benefited and how much it was helping her. So you figured we should tell everybody and not everybody is as brave to go do that and uh, get that information out there, dude. So it's such a powerful thing what you're doing. Oh, thank you. It, it, it's all about her. She she was brave enough to take the oil. I mean, 
She listened to us. She trusted us, and she did it. And it helped her so much. Her quality of life was so far above and beyond every other one of those pediatric cancer patients on that floor. It's not even funny. You should see all the parents that come up to us and ask us what we're doing differently. It's so fun to tell them and see the recognition in their eyes when they realize exactly what it is that we're telling them. It's stunning to them, and then they want it. They want to do it, too. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I feel it uh, It definitely transcends, I mean, and, and can change your opinion when it's something so powerful and it's, uh, you know, your child or any loved one. I mean, imagine if it was like your parents, which would be even more challenging thing because they're stubborn and hard headed. But I mean, you know, if it can basically save your life, uh, yeah, you're going to be very adamant about it, um, you know, and and uh, and sharing the information with them. So, dude, it's uh, such a great thing. And um, I mean, yeah, just how did you even I mean, did you guys were you were obviously I mean, I'm, or were you smoking before and then you just had heard about other things with cannabis and how it could help. And that's how that kind of led on or what, you know, what was that trigger that was like, okay, I think, I feel like we should do this. So I myself have partaken in the use of cannabis for a number of years. I've always been very receptive to different qualities found in the plant. And I've been somewhat of an activist my entire life since I was a teenager. Um, <clears throat> How we stumbled upon curative properties of the plant was it was really random. We we were um, hanging out with Aaron's dad's best friend who had also been diagnosed with stage four lung cancer, and we started noted or he <clears throat> told us that his tumors weren't growing the entire time he was smoking with us, and so we started looking at anti-cancer properties of the cannabis plant and we were blown away we, we stumbled upon this grassroots movement with names like Rick Simpson and and you know uh, Cash Hyde and a couple of other very well-known activist patients that we we really started reading and it blew our minds and and we decided that if we had ever been diagnosed with cancer that as parents we would try that first uh, we, this is just a couple of months before Michaela's diagnosis. We had no idea she was even sick yet. It was just, wow. it's like, it was like the universe blessed us with the answer before the trial. You know? Wow. And so we were very receptive to it when it came time. We, it's, it was the first step and it was about the best thing we've ever done for her, hmm. uh, through her whole treatment. Yeah. And I've, we, seen, I've seen some of the videos online and stuff that when, you know, when she was starting to take it, you know, you guys have a lot of that stuff and uh, the improvements and whatnot. Um, I mean, and then you, you also mentioned Rick Simpson, which is like another really big influential person. He's very adamant about, you know, the oil and curing people and he's cured so many people with it. And uh, I know, you know, uh, Robert Blunt, Blount as well. And uh, you guys do some stuff together. And uh, yeah, he's had him on the show. And I mean, it's just so amazing, uh, the power of cannabis, really. I mean, helping on all levels with so many different ailments. Um, and, and then also, you know, like you're saying, um, receiving the answer before the, you know, the challenge had ever arisen is just such a blessing uh, to receive that, you know, because when it comes, it's like, oh, here's, here's what we do already instead of, you know, could put you in that stage I could easily see of worry or stress or, you know what I mean, doubt in, you know, standard medicine um, based off of everything and how it's how that's helping people and what that's doing for people and how that impacts your quality of life. And then even being so young and having something like that and taking such powerful drugs, how does that impact you the rest of your life? You know what I mean? And uh, that's the least yeah. of their worries, too. You know, they don't take that into consideration. There's a couple of really sad things about standard chemotherapy treatments for children. One is, is the drugs haven't really changed that much in 40 years. And two is they're, they're not dosed based upon, you know, sex, age group, things like that, you know, they, they have standard regimens. And so not all kids get the same. It's not as effective for some as in some super effective on others. And there's always the accidents from the doctors. And these are very toxic, you know, life threatening chemical drugs that you don't want to be doing as much, you know, if you could get away from it, if you could take an option to, to stand back and try something else more natural first, I would try that first. It works a lot. It's not a guaranteed cure, but your, <laughs> excuse me, your quality of life will be far superior than it ever could be 
if you were just taking, you know, pharmaceutical symptom relief like Advil, morphine, things like that, you know. And so there's benefits no matter when you start it. It's never too late and it's never too early. I believe that um, it's such a beneficial medicine because we all have an endocannabinoid system that we aren't allowed to use due to prohibition. So it's basically a severe vitamin deficiency leading to disease just like vitamin C, vitamin E, and vitamin D deficiency. So I mean, that's where I'm at personally. I'm, I'm a big health guy, natural. I'm a vegetarian, you know, and, and cannabis just fits right in there with the rest of my herbal therapies and vitamins and things that I take. So it's like what we try to teach our children. Nice. You know. Yep. Yeah, dude, we've actually been, uh, uh, Rob's been staying with me for a little bit and uh, you know, we've been getting some cannabis leaves and then putting them in the smoothie, replacing some of the kale. Uh, and then he has, uh, what do we have? Hemp protein in there and he has hemp, uh, hemp oil. And then we get hemp milk and then we have the cannabis. And then I forget, I think he had one other thing. It's like, we got five, you know, cannabis centric products in our smoothies in the morning. Um, you know, so we're getting a nice dosage on, uh, on completely, uh, other levels that, you know, people wouldn't necessarily think about. Um, you know, people think about smoking, I think, you know, generally, or, um, just eating a cookie or something, but, you know, having a juice, juicing the leaves, putting it in a smoothie, um, cooking with it in a numerous amount of ways, uh, which we've actually been doing a lot of stuff with the Herbal Chef, and uh, we're coming up with some crazy stuff. Even, man, dude, and I've talked about it before, my puppy, or puppy, he's 17, Kobe, he, he's been getting cannabis treats, his quality of life, five to ten times better. Like, to the point where I thought it might have to put him down, and to the point where now it's, he was <laughs> running... The other night, dude, he's 17. At like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, I took the dogs out to go for a walk. He's freaking running for no reason. Everywhere. Just running. He has I had a seen him run in, system. Yeah. <laughs> I had seen him run six to nine months, and I'm like, damn, dude, you're like a 119-year-old person equivalent running around at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> so it's a, uh, it has such an impact on not only uh, humans, but I mean, I feel animals as well because they have the cannabinoid receptors. And it's like, why do we have those? You know, why do we just happen to have those in our body? You know what I mean? It's for a reason, obviously. They need to be filled, just yeah. like the vitamin deficiencies that you can have. <laughs> Daily stimulation is key. So Yes, it is. So, dude, that kind of, um, you know, I like how we built up and uh, shared backing and, um, you know, what you've been doing and going through and how it's been benefiting you and other people that you know and learning about it and everything. Um, and that, would you say that kind of all that led to the formation of Parents for Pot? Is that, was that all the build up to that or what was the, uh, you know, inspiration behind creating that organization? Well, uh the intention behind that was was it wasn't just our story. I'm not the only founder. It was actually another person and I founded it together, and then we selected six more people to head the national board with us. It was then when the other parents groups, moms from marijuana, dads from marijuana, those things were becoming unstable, and, and there is no coexistence between them, and there was very little teamwork, and 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 we. The, the group of us that founded Parents for Pot felt that we needed a, a family unit group, you know, um, to show union. Because the only way you're going to create change is to be unified and to separate based upon, you know, sex or religion or things like that. It, it, it creates boundaries that are impossible when trying to reach the end cause. And so we drew from our story and these other stories that are out there and, and formed a group that's called Parents for Pot, this is our logo, you know, um, we're there for the families, we're there for these kind of kids, we're there for adults who are treating themselves, you don't even have to be a parent, you don't have to have a child, you can still be part of our group, we are all parents, or we all have parents, or we will all have children or love children, and so we're just all in this together, and, and so basically, we do these little things here and there that help the community instead of projecting out there politically we we raise money or or we do drives for shoes and backpacks and things like that christmas gifts every year for for families like pow's cannabis uh, prohibition pow's they have their their children out there on the streets with one parent or living with another family member missing their father and mother who may be incarcerated and so we step in and we we get a, a wish list together on amazon every Christmas time and, and we put them out there and people come and 
first these gifts would get sent directly to these children and, and we raised over sixteen dollars worth of gifts last year for these kids and wow. we gave people a real Christmas and that makes us feel so good to be able to give back to a community that's working so hard to change things for humanity. Um, <coughs> we've now grown to well over twenty chapters. I can't even give the exact count. I, I believe there's one chapter forming in each state. We have some very profound, hardworking chapters, you know, California, Oregon, Colorado, uh, Massachusetts, those types of places, they're really doing their, they're, they're really <laughs> doing really well. In California, nice. It's, it's, it's oh, I got powerful. Nice, dude. Nice. That's amazing. Very inspirational. It's great that people are getting on everywhere around the country, as you're saying. Uh, the ping in the download that I got while you were talking was, by all means, let me know whenever any of those things are going on, because I would love to donate some of, uh, you know, we have reach on other posts and pages and whatnot. And so let me know whenever any of that's happening. And I know Rob is probably promoting and helping out with that too, but let me know so that I can donate some time, energy and effort to uh, pages that we have. Cause we have, you know, a few accounts as well that I would love to post, uh, you know, information about that. Like when it's time, you know, when people can donate to kids and give back by all means, that's a message that I would love to share. Um, and I'm sure we could even get, and here's even another thing. I'll do this, dude. How about this? If you even get like, or have a little commercial or anything like that with information, 30 second video, something like that, when it comes out, I could put it on the radio show as a commercial that we play during the show. Um, while well, however long that's running, maybe a month or whatever, we can have that on the show. So I'm definitely down for that. I'm gonna jot that note down. And so if we do wanna, you guys do get that together when that's going on for any drive, if you do a little commercial, I can uh, get that on the show. So I'm gonna jot that down too. Hey, thank you very much. I'll kindly take you up on that offer anytime our group does do anything. There's a lot of us out there. And if you wanna keep updated in other ways, <laughs> I write for Skunk Magazine and uh, Every month, there's a Parents for Pot section, and we give nice. updates on what we've been doing and what's coming up. And uh, that's one way that our people can can find a little bit of connection as well. As you can go to parentsforpot.org and and join us there um, and be a part of the team. You know, be part of the change. We're ending prohibition one family at a time. Nice, dude. So what's what's uh, what's next for Parents for Pot, or what are the goals for this year? Or you know, what are uh, what what do you guys have on the on the horizon? Well, I know there's always the continuous growth is the main goal. We want to we want to numbers you know exponentially year by year. Uh, this year, you know, we we're planning on attending or being present at every convention or event or festival that's taking place inside the national cannabis industry here in the United States. Um, we're sh <coughs> Excuse me, I got a bit of a cough. We got, oh, um, we're doing a, a few outreach projects. We're going to be doing a Parents for Pop Family Day here in Oregon at some point this summer, but we're going to try to bring in people from all over the place to kind of band together. And we're going to do it in the down townish area is what I'm thinking so we can attract the general public to it and be a completely open and friendly thing where we can talk to people about it and let people realize you know it's not just a bunch of hippies smoking reefer in the park you know we're we're all working people we're all families we're all awesome people and we love the hippies I'm still a hippie at heart you know yeah but I still will that, sit down in the park sometimes and smoke. That's fine. <laughs> all the time, my friend, all the time. I smoke every day. You know, a lot of people are surprised. They they think that because I'm Michaela's dad or because I work with parents for pot or things like that, that I may not be a cannabis user myself. And it shocks people all the time that I smoke every day. <laughs> I mean, that's, it's, uh, it's just <coughs> part of a, um, it's part of a regimen, you know? People have their different uh, their different things that they do on a daily basis. And for some people, you know, smoking on a daily basis isn't your thing, doesn't work with you, doesn't work with your lifestyle. And by all means, you as an individual should know that and regulate yourself accordingly, you know. Yeah, use the plant to be supportive of the change in its name. Yep, exactly. You know, you don't have to be smoking every day. You can still donate your time and it's A-OK. -okay. <laughs> it goes a long way. Tell somebody about it is my thing. Just talk. The conversation, the most talked about, the more accepted it is. It's been shut down and lied about for so long. Yep. So. yep. Amazing time. So I know you guys, uh, you're getting ready for Denver and Colorado as well then. Oh, yes. 
We're gonna be uh, we get out there on the thirteenth. We should uh, and uh, we'll all be out there. All of us, me, Rob, Cody, will be filming, and then a few other friends as well. So we should definitely link up. I'm gonna jot that note down to call you. <laughs> definitely we'll look forward to that. When do you guys get in? I'm not positive just yet. It takes more planning for us, you know, family things. So. Oh yeah. It's a little bit more complicated with the kids to get things planned. Yeah, and there's a lot of stuff going on in Oregon right now. It's keeping Erin. She's been very politically involved in the recreational um, implementation here in Oregon because they're really messing with the medical program. And if that gets taken away, then nobody under 21 has access, safe access to any medicinal cannabis whatsoever. And so she works, <laughs> she works with Stony Girl Gardens here in Oregon, and she's been attending every uh, joint committee, <laughs> joint committee <laughs> meeting about the implementation of recreational cannabis to help fight that. And you can catch your videos on there too. It's really awesome. And so that's keeping us all really tied up around here. Um, it's happening really quick, you know? It's going to be well, great. thank you guys for putting in that energy, that time, that effort, because that's, you know, I didn't know that that was going on and that was something that was happening that they were trying to do while they're implementing, you know, recreational. And that's definitely something that, you know, should not go down. So the fact that she's there fighting that fight because who else is doing it? Um, you know, I'm sure there's some other people with her, but definitely, sh you know, shout out to you guys and props for doing that as well, because uh, it's very important that the med medical stays, you know, with the recreational. I feel like, you know, it shouldn't be one in place of the other, um, but to do it coincide uh, at the same time. So very important. Well, thank you. Man. I thank you, dude. I definitely thank you. I look forward to chilling with you guys out there. I'm sure we'll get together. I'll shoot you a text, shoot you a call. Is there anything else that you want to uh, leave everybody with? Shout out the website again, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, any of that. And uh, we can drive some traffic over there so people can go and get connected and become aware. Yeah, you know, there's Michaela's website, www.bravemichaela.com. It's a powerful, open website that we want everybody to see. There's parentsforpot.org. That's parents with the number four, pot.org. And then, you know, I have a blog called Canada Dad's Blog, and I'm Canada Dad on every social media site you can find. So that's where you find us all at. Perfect, dude. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Gypsy, was there anything that you, any questions you had or anything you wanted to ask, my friend, before we uh, wind down this uh, another amazing power hour here? No, I had a few questions right towards the end, but you guys answered them all. I want, I wanted, uh, I wanted Brandon to give an opportunity to uh, to plug the blog Canada, which looks like a very fun and interesting blog. I think I'm going to check it out myself in some downtown uh, downtime. Um, and uh, yeah, I, wa I wanted you to talk more about some of the the political activism that you you and your wife are into. But it sounds like she she she's working it out over there. Yeah, she's she's really taking a strong lead role in it. I I've been tending to kind of focus on my writing and be the babysitter for our little ones. You know, somebody's got to watch the kids and, and she's a mother. And, and I just have to say mothers make sometimes more powerful statements in the eyes of legislators than does a dad. And, you know, it's all about tone and approach and, and a female has a way about it that I don't. That's and so, <laughs> I would, but I, I do attend and I do speak and, and, and you'll find me, uh, uh, you know, testifying here and there when I have the time to, and, it's fun. I love it. It's something I really enjoy doing. Actually, I'm very passionate about my activism, and that's where our family is. Well, that's so. awesome, man. We we definitely appreciate your, your your time and your talent in in the industry, and and you know for for this cause, it's so important for all of us. Yeah, thank you guys for doing what you do. Without places like you to be a platform, you know, you guys give people a voice, and uh, I appreciate that a lot. For sure. Definitely, dude. Well, we appreciate you and everything you're doing. Um, and again, thank you for your time. And I look forward to chilling with you when we get out to Colorado. You too. Let me know when you're in Portland next time. There's a lot to do around here. Keeping it really yeah, busy. dude. That as well. We got to get up there again. We just were in Seattle. And um, I want to get back down to Portland. That'll be fun. I'm going to jot that down too. I need to get to Port <laughs> Remember, Portland soon. <laughs> Portland is the cheapest place in the country for your cannabis needs. Wow. What, uh, I've, don't you guys, isn't there going to be a cannabis cup there? Isn't High Times doing a cannabis cup? Yeah, there's discussion of it. There's a page created. They're talking about doing it sometime in July, which is actually when recreational marijuana is finally in existence. Um, that's when it takes off. 
Measure 91 does. And so that's what they were talking about. We just had one not too long ago here. It's called the Hemp Convention. It's just not as a big of a production as the High Times one. And so, yeah, if they come to town and if they're able to get a spot, you know, I'm very curious to see if they're allowed a venue in Portland. They they really harass hemp stock every year. And so <laughs> yeah, if they come in, then uh, I'll definitely be in attendance. Maybe they'll let me judge. Yeah, there you go, dude. That oh my god, those judges kids, bro. Get out of here. <laughs> so I get invited. I get invited. I just don't have the time to fly, man. They you know, when <laughs> when it's right, when it's right, it will happen. The universe uh, will provide you the right experience and the right time. But then you weren't you at the Emerald Cup with us too. Yes, we were, dude. That we were chilling. That yeah. was crazy. That was crazy, dude. <laughs> I and never seen so many entries. Yeah, that whole case is crazy. All the flower, especially for being sun-grown, is so beautiful. You know, you don't get sun-grown like that here in Oregon. It's moist. And so when you see that Northern California stuff, it's just gorgeous. I love it all. Yeah, it was uh, it was breathtaking. Uh, yeah, man, we are very blessed and highly favored out here with uh, with the flowers that we that we have. So, hey, but, you know, if Oregon has the best, uh, you know, rates, that's always nice <laughs> out there, too. You know, people, I mean, and it's not to say that the Oregon doesn't have some fire as well as um, just different. Oh, no, it does. Our indoor is on point here. You know, we got to focus it up here in the northwest like this. If there's a lot of rain, you can get that mold and mildew. So yep. keep it indoors and we'll see. See you later, man. Definitely, dude. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Gypsy, uh, for being here producing the show. Appreciate everybody tuning in to the F and Power Hour right here, right now. It's Wednesday. It's April 8th. We're done with our notes. We're done with our show. We shared our wins. I'm looking forward to freaking Colorado, my friends. We're actually about to be pre-recording a show uh, coming up here so that while we're out in Colorado doing what we do and having the time of our lives, we'll be sharing it with you. We'll be sharing with you after when we get back. So I uh, appreciate you guys. Take care until our next Power Hour. Uh, man, we're going to be having some amazing guests, but who knows who they'll be. You'll find out very soon. Stay tuned. And remember, every Saturday, I'm dropping new effing videos in your inbox. Uh, devices, cooking, uh, growing, uh, glass, and all the above. I'm going to catch you guys later. This is Master Bong on the Power Hour, where we're always letting the good times roll. Peace. Ah. <laughs>